All right, so this is the part where we'll finally be getting into this. We have everything set up, and the first thing that we're going to do is if you head over to your brush pack, you'll see the blending brush. Now, if you just select that and you look over at your toolbar, the mixer tool, um, and it looks like this, it is a brush with a little droplet next to it, that should be equipped, and this is a very important tool. Now, essentially with this tool, what you can do is it's almost like it allows you to paint as if you were using oil paints. And if you've never used oil paints, it's sort of like you can really start blending everything together and it's, it's pretty cool. Now, I'll show you what I mean. So in the last video, what we did is... Um, now I took this and rotated it and now our lights are sort of at the bottom and that's not what we want. So we can do something to fix that. And what I'm going to do is select our lasso tool. Make sure our layer is selected here. And what we'll do is make a copy of it by pressing control J or command A, uh, J. And that will make a copy right here. And if we just select this part right here, just get all this lights right here. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. And we just move it over here. I'm going to rotate it by pressing Control T for transform. And um, I think I'll make it a little bit bigger and just so I can get those lights at the top. Now, if I go ahead and press Control D, um, that'll deselect it. And we now have our lights at the top. And this is going to be for our sky. The sky is what we're going to establish first. And that is going to be the brightest feature in our landscape. You want to keep your lights towards the top and your darks at the bottom. And just keep that mentality in your head. Just think, okay, darks are at the bottom, lights are at the top. Now, as you go back into the background, your lights are going to be there and your darks are going to be forward. So as you come forward, more contrast and it's going to be darker. Now, I'll, I'll keep saying that over and over. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to make, I just made a copy again by pressing control J and now we have some lights here. I'm going to hide this real quick. I'm going to grab this, uh, these darks here, bring it right here, press control T, rotate it just like that. Press the check mark, press control D. And now if I have this here. And I bring that up here. Okay, so now this is looking a lot better. Now we have our lights at the top and darks at the bottom. We have some lights all over the place. And I, I know that I said like, <laughs> this is a pretty warm palette, but it's really, um, it's really all over the place. We have cools, lights, darks. It's an awesome variation. I mean, great neutrals. I think we're going to get something really cool with this. So what I'm going to do first is I just made all these layers. So I'm going to combine these by pressing control E and then press it again. And now we have one whole layer. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do is go to our blending brush again. And if we just zoom in just a little bit by pressing alt and scrolling, that's how I zoom in. And all I'm going to do is if I go in here, you can see right away that I am mixing all these pixels. So let me zoom in even more just so you can see. If you just take a look here, I am um, I'm using my tablet now. This is this is where you use your tablet. <laughs> and um, I'm just pressing down here. And what this is doing is I'm pulling these pixels and you can just see that it's just blending all of it together. And I'm just going in spirals like this. And you can see it's all blending, getting a little blurry, blending all together. 
And that's what we want to do throughout the whole entire image. Okay. We want to cover that, get a whole coat of this. And, um, you want to change your brush size frequently. Don't get too big because then you're going to get muddy results. But pretty much the idea of this, why we're doing this is we're blending all these, all these, um, pixels together all the this whole image and hopefully we'll start to see shapes now once we see shapes we can start to um establish this landscape now you want to keep things in mind you don't want to go just completely crazy um although that is fun sometimes and you get some really awesome abstract results but really this is going to be a lot of experimenting um, before you even maybe even use the blending brush, I, I would suggest um, playing around with it in a separate file and you, you'll probably see that you'll start to see a landscape even just playing around with it. But um, this should be pretty stress free and just really just go for it. But for right now, the first thing you want to do. So right now I'm establishing a sky. Now, the sky, as I said, is the brightest part. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking this lighting light part and I'm just starting in the light zone and pulling it out. You can just pull these pixels right out. Now you can see how flat and muddy it gets um, when you use a big brush. And that's why I suggest using a small brush so you can um, get as much detail as possible and you want as much detail as possible. <laughs> But for the sky, usually it's going to be pretty clear, pretty simple, and it's just there like that. Now, I'm going to change up my stroke, so I, I'm going like um, diagonal like this, and I go like this. And what I suggest is try and start in the in the background or towards the top more, and then work your way towards the foreground, just like a traditional landscape. That's what you would do. And keeping my brush small, I don't even worry if you're, don't try to make a like mountain or something. Don't try to make this and that. Only focus on getting as much detail in here as possible. Now, of course, I did say you want to have establish a sky. Well, yes, you do want a sky here. And that is going to be pretty clear. You just want just the whole, I'm just going to extend it here and I'm just pulling these pixels. You can see I'm, I'm actually pulling out these black bars. Um, and you can do that too, that, um, but you want to kind of stick away from that, from the sky that that's more useful if you want to bring it, uh, into the foreground, because your foreground is going to be the darkest. Now I just kind of going all over the place and just you see it gets a little slow there that's what happens when you work with the high-res images um it can get a little uh slow have to has to load and whatnot but if you just have a small brush just like this you can um have it so it's really not slow at all but it, it does depend how fast you're going but not not too much to worry about there no, I just want, let me just extend this sky over here. Um, I can already tell that my, I, my vision of a warm, rocky desert landscape, maybe this wasn't the image to choose, but I'm really, I, I'm starting to like what's happening here. I really am. So let's just, let's just get a coat going here. Um, and I just want to start in the background and work my way up here. I'm, I'm starting to notice that, hey, this could be a pathway, uh, this warm area, nice bright warm area going here. Maybe I'll extend that there. Um, now I said don't look for things, but you will start to notice things naturally. And I mean, I guess what I was saying is don't try to make a mountain right away until you see a mountain for example like so i'm starting to see kind of like some weird rock formations but i don't know maybe this could be like some crazy cloud going on i don't know but 
I'm trying to just mix up my brush strokes. Like we have, it's pretty flat here. So we have some like crazy purple here. So I can just pull those pixels out just like that. And it, you can really start to see just how powerful this tool is. This is why I love this tool. It is so awesome. Um, you really can, this technique, you get really crazy, awesome, random results and I love it. So yeah, we do have pretty crazy color palette going on here, actually. Um, it, 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 you know, it, we have like some warms, we have cools, we have like a pretty cool sky going on. I really, it's like almost ethereal. I don't know how to describe it, but we're just going to keep going with this. We're going to keep going. And um, if you find yourself that you're not happy with something, any section whatsoever, if it's too muddy, just go, I would say just go crazy on it. Really, like, I mean, why keep it there if you don't like it? Um, so really, it, I mean, if you work on this for like 30 minutes, um, yeah, I mean, you really could in theory just keep going and going. But it will start to get uh, more muddy as you go on. And if you get to a point where you just don't see anything, then I would suggest to either restart or find a new image. And that's, that is perfectly fine. Not every image will work. I mean, I'm sure you could make it work in some way, but really the reality is then they're not all going to work for you. I mean, we all have different styles. We all have different this and that. Um, so yeah, so now I'm almost done covering this and I'm just going to, I didn't get over here yet. So I just want to, we have our sky, right? And we can look over here. If you look at your navigator right here, you can see this zoomed out. Like if we zoom out, you can start to see things, right? So we're at a point now where I'm going to start looking for shapes and that's what you want to do you want to start sort of defining them okay we have sort of a background middle ground and foreground already establishing here like here this is our darkest part and we are just going to just keep mixing just keep mixing and i mean this could be like some kind of rock here in the foreground and I mean, that's just, that's just how it happened. And it just kind of automatically, like this automatically just starts coming together as long as you keep, as long as you keep your darks in the front like this, and you keep your lights in the back, it should just automatically look like a landscape. It, it, that's just naturally how it will look. Just keep going and so here I, I, I mean I can zoom up here I'm just spiraling like this and just want to I just want a full coat just a whole coat just like this and I want to create as much detail as I can it is very it is important that you you really do want to create as much detail as you can but look at this look at this we are really we I, I, I pretty much have a full coat just miss some right here. We want a full thing going on here. And by the way, the way I'm doing this by moving this, I'm just holding down the space bar and moving that just in case you didn't know that. So it looks like we have a full kind of coat here. And now we're at a point where I want to start looking for shapes. So we want to find areas that we want to start kind of giving it meaning. So looking for shapes, right? Looking for shapes, the, and those shapes will start to become mountains. They'll start to become this and that. So like, I mean, we already have a sky going on here. That's awesome. And we, I'm starting to see, we kind of have, this is sort of like a mountain that I, I'm thinking like, yeah, this can be sort of a mountain. So what I'm going to do is just take my mixer brush 
keep it pretty small. The smaller it is, the more detail you get, and you do want a lot of detail. Now, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I do see sort of a pathway leading from the foreground into the background. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to sort of just push those pixels up just like that. And ooh, so I'm thinking like, like pathways are really awesome because it kind of, especially if you like kind of, you have an S curve going on, those are really awesome compositions. So I can kind of, if you have like a little curvy pathway, um, those are really awesome, really awesome compositions. So it's look, looking like this pathway goes through here and it kind of goes up. And I just want to just start defining that. I want to uh, say, yes, this is going to be a pathway. This over here can be like a mountain. And I'm just I'm just moving these pixels like we are not placing down anything. We're not erasing anything. We're not painting in anything. We're just moving these pixels around just like this. And this is just awesome. So this can be we can start to have it's starting to um, come to me that this is going to be a pretty mountainous landscape. All right. So we have sort of a um, flat ridge going on here. So let's see what we can do to have something a little bit different. So maybe um, I'm not sure what's going on here, but we have a lot of light coming up from here. So maybe something's irradiating from there, something this, but really, okay, it can be anything, like anything, like any shape you see can be anything, like it doesn't have to exist at all, you can make it exist. And that is what's so awesome about um, all of this. So I'm definitely getting a mountainous sense kind of like um, this can be sort of I'm thinking like we have like a wall going on here and I like what's happening here almost like kind of like a canyon sort of deal and obviously we have some rocks here and we want to make sure there's there's going the more in the foreground the more detail there's going to be so I'm thinking okay so what can we do here in the foreground like maybe we can oh yes okay so we're making it more interesting like this. Um, so this is the thing with working from the background to the foreground. I, I mean, I was kind of all over the place, but really um, you can start to see now I'm working in the foreground. Maybe we're getting some kind of plants going on, but really we're, we're, we're getting something pretty cool here. And I'm thinking like we can just manipulate this, keep moving it. And you just want to keep doing this keep doing it and until you say yes I think I'm ready to move on to the next step and how you know you're ready to move on to the next step is when you're saying like yes I see something here I want to start going in and I want to make these these objects more apparent I want this to be this and this to be this that's when you know you're ready so um I mean, you can just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. Um, but obviously, things get more and more muddy and more muddy when you do that. So you want to be careful about that. I'm just going to keep working on this. And I think I'm going to speed this up. And yeah, I'll get back to you. So I want to say something. This is pretty important. Um, now... As we're getting this idea of a landscape, um, you know, we're starting to get this kind of pathway, mountains in the distance, that sort of thing. Um, I do want to say, I, I want to show you something that a lot of concept artists tend to do. Now, if you go to up to image and you go to image rotation and you find flip canvas horizontal, that will flip your entire image. And this is actually really important. Okay. Um, the idea here is that the landscape should look just as good as it does flipped. And to the artist, flipping this is like looking at an entire new piece. Now, we don't have too much here yet, but I will definitely be flipping this a lot more in later videos as we develop this more. Now, when you flip this, you'll 
probably notice flaws immediately. Like, I mean, this is kind of tilted, uh, sort of weird. So maybe I need to flatten that out. I mean, maybe too many things are going this way. I don't know. Maybe I want things going this way. But like your hand will start to go in different directions. And okay. So I actually have a shortcut. For this and I set mine to control alt H for horizontal and if you want to change this all you need to do is go up to edit um, go up to keyboard and shortcuts you'll get this menu and if you go to image scroll down until you find flip canvas horizontal and you can just type in that shortcut control alt H or whatever you want to type in, whatever you want to use. I just have it set as a uh, a quick key on my, where is it? There it is, <laughs> um, on my tablet. And I can just keep switching it, but you can see just how different it makes it. And you might find out that you actually like it this way better. Um, but just keep flipping it and that will also help you find things. It'll help you look more for things. And yeah, so I'm just gonna keep mixing. Okay, so I think we are, we have something here now. Um, and now remember we, we have our color palette already. We have our values and we should now start to get an idea of what we're after. Now, let's just take a look and see what I've done. Um, now, keep keep looking at Navigator and looking back and forth so you can see the whole picture. Um, when, you, when you do zoom out, you get a much better sense of what's happening. You can really start to see like, yes, there is a landscape here and it really is, we have some crazy colors going on here, which, um, I I love this actually. This is going to be really cool. So I mean, what we have here, I might work on it just a little bit more, but we have um, a pathway here, sort of going. We have like some really weird mountains in the background here. We have our foreground here. We have our sky, and with all of that considered, we really we're starting to get something here. So let me make this clear. Not every image will work for you. And I, I said this before, but I'll say it again. But if you found this frustrating and don't see any potential, find another image. I've restarted tons of times. And also try to just get used to this blending brush. It can be a little weird at first, but once you get it, you really, it really is very powerful. Just open up a document, start playing around with it, and you you might find out that you actually start getting something really cool. It, it really... It, it's pretty cool, but um, it, it does take practice. And guys, this is not easy. This is tough. I mean, I'll help you as much as I can, but it really boils down to commitment and practice. Not every piece you do is going to be great, let alone good. But if you really take the time to practice this, you truly can get some amazing results. So with that said, let me just quickly review some things to keep in mind. Keep your brush small for the most part, especially when you think you're about to be done. Keep your lights towards the top and darks near the bottom. This will help establish depth and it will start to automatically look like a landscape. Don't overdo it. Your painting can get muddy pretty quickly and you want as much detail as you can get. That's why I suggest keeping a small brush. And also finally, you need to look for shapes. Once you start to see shapes, those shapes can become rocks, mountains, buildings, literally anything you can imagine. It doesn't even have to make sense of what that object is. Once you start thinking you have a vision, we're going to refine that vision. We're going to keep refining it, refining it. Um, you can refine it in this stage with just with the mixer brush, just by moving, manipulating those pixels around. Just keep your brush small and start to make sense of those shapes through light. Your light source can be from anywhere and 
you can have multiple sources. But don't stress too much about light right now, we'll get to it later. Really, when you're done with this phase, the painting is actually almost done. You just need to refine it, and it, it really can, once you start to refine it, things really start to come together. Um, but, like, I mean, this is really just, so we're not, we're not starting on a blank canvas. We have everything, a, a lot of it already established. This is really beginning phases, um, but... We're just going to go ahead and refine it more. You can just keep refining it with the mixer brush if you want to. But in the next video, we're going to be doing a few adjustments to make your vision more clear.